Mr. Shea Aditya joins us now. He's a security expert, and as we sink our teeth into this matter, thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Good morning. Well, we don't know what they discussed there. They, they didn't let out much, as expected, of security agents. They always like exactly. to keep, keep things under wraps. But you know, some of the testimonies coming through from people about uh, maybe the victims or the ones you get to see the narratives there, they keep talking about uh security officials either in the military or pirate whichever one involved in these cases and i don't know from, from your perspective do you think that there is a deliberate attempt to ensure that this is identified and dealt with well i think it's it's likely um depends or varies from agencies to agencies i know that there are agencies that um, they are internal control uh, systems um they are very very uh, active and good and they've been very effective and there are agencies maybe because of um, years of neglect um, and um, bad uh, let me say employee management system it has made um, management of their staff movements uh, a, a nightmare employee system what do you mean by employee, employee system? management system so you have do you, do you have cases for instance where unqualified people get into no into what is what of course definitely that that will always even in, in corporate organizations as well and that's why you have you know um, control measures like uh, background checks and the rest being put in place to ensure that even along the line if they escape during recruitment you can still pick them up immediately after recruitment but what I'm trying to say is this you see for you know we, we had a time in, in this country where a uh, police payroll system uh, and salary payment was a nightmare where you see dead uh, officers still reflecting on the payroll and somebody still con uh, uh, was still con collecting their their salary those that have been dismissed their names are on the payroll there are those that are dismissed and then reposted them himself to another command uh, with a fake deployment letter after you have been dismissed in another command you see police is very large and um, uh, I think it's a lot better now than the way it used to be before. So, but I believe that with time, um, that will be able to, um, you know, will be they will be able to manage that properly. Uh, I've also received, I mean, heard of testimonies of of, of uh, a victim, uh, kidnap victim, stating that um, uh, some of the kidnappers were um, soldiers because the Hoover had them talking about expiration of their pass. And uh, you know, likely uh, it is the military that uses pass if they actually want to go out. So they were actually hiring up the non-military component of their team to you know, conclude the negotiation on time so that they don't exhaust the their past uh, and also if you look at the the weapon handling uh, proficiency of some of these uh, syndicates you definitely suspect that these people must have had uh, f uh, some form of formal uh, training in uh, weapon handling so you know putting all these things together you can we can also not uh, rule out uh, those that were dismissed uh, from from service as well now seen kidnapping as a um, uh, as a as a good area to go into anyways uh, already an all commerce uh, affair but as to whether there is a deliberate yes I, I i i believe all agencies is just to what extent their effort is actually you know paying off <laughs> let so me pick up on that to, to what extent can we attribute some of these cases of military uh, uh excuse me personnel involved in crime uh how do we how to what extent do we attribute that to the interagency rivalry for instance between the police and the army if the army feel no we, we I think, I think that one likely has to do with investigation. That is only when you, they are, you know, you are in, in uh, within the area of investigation that you have that, uh, you know, no, but you know, you goes know. Uh, investigation. No, I, I, I will tell you why, why I say that because that really does not account for why we have people going into kidnapping. You know what I'm saying now? What I mean, area of investigation is that when something has to do with the police. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, uh, a soldier, they, I mean, uh, that has to do with a soldier and the police is investigating. They reach a brick wall because that is another agency. So the ability of these agencies uh, to cooperate among themselves to ensure that there is smooth uh, investigation. Mm -hmm. Or you see investigation uh, being going, I mean, ongoing, and uh, DSS are investigating, uh, police are also investigating. Same. And they have this aspect of this uh, uh, aspect of the same uh, investigation this other side have aspect mm -hmm. of the uh, same investigation and uh, because of you know some of these officers at times they want to you know be uh, funny at times and will not really really want to share maybe because of a need uh, to to break that bureaucracy in information shared which i believe that is a lot better now than the wages but that does not in any way account for a serving officer to engage 
because of rivalry in kidnapping. No, if no. they have when, the when mindset that about we're superior in terms of our training and qualification, that who's supposed to check us, the police, if they feel they can handle them, do you think that will embolden them? No, to we've, seen, we've seen, um, DSS came up with, um, you know, they just rolled out a list of, um, uh, in, I mean, uh, arrests they made of recent, and the soldiers mm. were involved. Last but, couple of you talked about uh, so, the pass, when you talked about that, that pass, especially, and uh, is, it's a terminology used by some of the military uh, concerns, is there a mechanism that can trace who issued that and to who in the course of investigation to be able to understand who passed what and possibly even weapons exactly and i think uh, is is one of the areas that um, we actually need to look to uh, look into as a country now um mr shamba we have amaras in uh, information staying there for 10 years in a particular uh, bit uh, is wrong you see these amaras they don't have any other thing doing other than issuing weapon service this weapon issue out rounds of ammunition and management and uh, the money the cost uh, management and custody of this weapon so that is where they hand their own living before i've said it's true by before an amara will issue weapon to his colleagues for an operation they must settle because it believes that the operation they are going for they will probably have been settled or those that are going on vip protection they will settle most of all these um, this, uh, ammunitions that you see around, most of them usually come out. you mean they'll bribe their way? Uh, exactly. So, well, you, you, this from colleagues. So, let's use the terminology, settle. So, it's, you, 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 it's, 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 it's a major issue. Where somebody will sit there and it's making photons, sitting on weapon. It's not something, see, and, and why? Because they, they, they see themselves as being, you know, confined to one particular area where they have been rendered useless. They are not actually seeing a career, you know, in what they're doing. I, 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 one of the solutions to this is there's need for security agents to start rotating those people move them away from uh, maybe the headquarters amory send them to training school they are amorous so that will they increase their weapon but that will increase their self-worth number one change environment it's for them to change environment it tells them to be able to use some aspect of their training which include training people on the use of weapon on how to handle weapon even if they are not that all that proficient in marksmanship they'll be proficient in dry practice uh, so to speak, and also also to teach people on how to actually, you know, service uh, their weapon, their what we call NSP, non, uh, I mean, uh, normal safety procedures that they can actually take people, and uh, they can also take them to other aspects of police duty or other agencies duty right. in which they can also be able to work and also use other aspects of their training in 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 in, in law enforcement. 